Thanks, Andrew. And um, I am really excited to be here. And it's great to see old faces, people that I know, people that I've only uh, connected to online have become real people, which is great. And uh, also lots of new people. Um, I'm really happy to see lots of new faces here. I'm really happy to see that there are a lot of uh, users at our user summit and that people haven't been uh, scared away thinking this is only for like super technical people. Um, and I'm hoping that people who have come here for the first time and have their first engagement with the Superstorm community are feeling welcome and comfortable and really welcome to everybody who's here and, and thanks for participating. Um, I'm just going to take a few minutes of your time. I know that you're enjoying your lunch conversations and everybody hasn't had their dessert yet. Um, but I want to take a few minutes of your time uh, to just let you know a little bit about um, what's going on with Superstorm as a project and the broader community. Um, we are uh, just about to hit our 10 year mark, which is uh, kind of amazing. Um, and uh, oh, I owe some of my gray beard to that, I think. Um, but uh, we have been sort of steadily working for the last 10 years trying to uh, build a platform in a community that would really enable uh, nonprofits around the world to uh, achieve their mission more effectively. Um, and the statement that's up on the board right here is uh, a quote that's sort of the lead from our newly uh, reinvigorated mission statement that's up on the website. Um, and really the way that I evaluate how we're doing and I think everybody on the core team and a lot of the partners and integrators that are here as well as the volunteers that have helped with the project all sort of are on the same page about being really excited about how organizations are able to do wonderful things and, and really make the world a better place um, using CiviCRM and due to the hard work that a lot of us are putting in and um, a lot of the contributions that come from everybody out there. Um, one of the things that I do in my free time, which I have very little of, <laughs> is I do have a tweet deck set up to sort of trap anything that's, uh, any campaigns that are on Twitter that have the word CiviCRM anywhere in them. And it's kind of cool that because that allows me to see um, a lot of the ways that people are using CiviCRM just because CiviCRM happens to be in the URL. <laughs> um, and a lot of organizations that I had no idea was using CiviCRM are out there. Um, and we've also been using some of that to harvest uh, stories for our newsletter, success stories, to help share um, information about what other organizations are doing, which I think is really helpful for the community. Um, a lot of those have been in the newsletter, and I'm going to highlight a couple of things that have been in the newsletter, um, just to, in case those of you whose mailboxes are so full with stuff that they, they didn't get to read our great newsletter. Um, so recently, we had in the newsletter um, highlighting uh, Doctors Without Borders in South Africa, who is um, using CiviStorm very effectively to help raise money um, for emergency aid, uh, to provide emergency aid to a bunch of different countries in Africa. Um, we had uh, a nice story from National Association for the Deaf, um, which is the largest civil rights organization for deaf and hard of hearing people in the country. And they are um, able to use CiviCRM to really increase their reach and serve their members. Um, we had a really nice piece from Ecology Action Center in Nova Scotia, which is a much smaller community-based organization that's helping uh, improve sustainability in Nova Scotia. And I mean, one of the things I want to point out from these little snippets is the wide range of sizes and, and scopes of organizations that are using CIVI. And this has been our intent all along, is that it's, it's not meant for the mega nonprofits exclusively. Um, we hope that it's something that uh, can be useful for nonprofits really of almost all shapes and sizes. And I think our growing user base uh, shows me that at least we're doing a half decent job of that. Um, in terms of the reach of the project, um, we have been uh, collecting site registrations for a while and we're now doing some uh, work on aggregating those stats a little bit more effectively and one of the first outcomes of that is this pretty cool Google map which basically has a little green balloon for every registered CiviCRM site. Um, and you can see that we are really all over the place. Um, some of you may already know that Civi is translated into 20 something languages. Um, and it's definitely being used in lots of countries around the world. 
It's obviously stronger in, in uh, North America and in Europe, but definitely beginning to uh, show up lots of other places in the world. Um, we will be um, expanding our work in stats, and certainly by next year, um, we're going to have some much more um, precise and granular stats to share with you about the growth of the community, which I, th I think will be really good. Um, you know, as an open source project, anyone can download CiviCRM, anyone can go to our download page or to SourceForge and, and pick up a copy, and we don't necessarily know anything about that, but um, we are increasingly sort of putting, the, uh, <laughs> putting pressure on folks that are running CiviCRM to at least take a few minutes to register their site with CiviCRM.org. Um, and it really helps the community and ultimately I think it helps you. So if anybody out here is using CiviCRM um, as an end user organization and you haven't registered your site, um, please take a few minutes to do that. Um, there's links all over the website to, to do that and uh, it's really cool to know what's going on out there. Um, we have a great and growing ecosystem that's uh, um, really uh, contributing to the success of the project and demonstrating it. Um, we started a partner program about a year and a half ago for um, service providers, implementers, consultants, developers who work with CiviCRM and we've grown to 57 partners right now, um, uh, many in the US but also in several other countries. Um, our newsletter, which is about a year old now in its new and improved state, um, is uh, received by more than 8,500 uh, different people and uh, I think is turning into a really great way both to share success stories between organizations using CiviCRM as well as to share um, tips uh, for how to use CiviCRM more successfully um, and also to highlight some of the great people that are part of making CiviCRM what it is today. Um, we um, continue to have very high downloads. Um, well, of course, a lot of people download it and then they don't do it, but um, we get, uh, last month there was 4,200 downloads in one month, so obviously a lot of interest in the platform. Um, we've been holding code sprints now for the last few years. Uh, there's one coming up uh, starting Saturday afternoon in Maryland nearby, and so if any of you are interested in uh, participating and haven't signed up, you can talk to Andrew or Frank in the back there um, about that. Um, there will also be a developer training um, tomorrow uh, that supplements the user and admin training that happened earlier this week. Um, and if people are interested in um, increasing their developer skills, I know this is mostly not a developer conference, but I know there's some, some hiding here in the room. Um, um, one of the things that is really important to us on the core team is that we get more and more people who understand CiviCRM as a platform and can help us innovate and make it better and fix bugs and that's really happening big time lately. Um, so we had 450 commits to the code base um, from a large variety of people and that's growing as well and I think testifies to the success of the system. Um, we are trying to do a better job of figuring out how many people are actually using CiviCRM around the world and we, we have numbers from different ways of measuring that range from 4,000 to 12,000 plus. Um, so this is an estimate but we've just put in some new um, tracking stuff in the software that hopefully will help us, at least for people who are not explicitly refusing to be tracked. Um, and that is an option because we respect everybody's privacy. Um, so we're at about, we think we're at about 8,000. Um, part of what makes CiviCRM possible is that we do have a core team of people who work on CiviCRM pretty much full time um, and they include um, myself as a project manager and a number of different uh, developers um, in several, <laughs> several physical locations um, and we have a new um, fundraising manager, uh, Josh Gowan, who may be contacting some of you. Um, and we also have a community manager, Michael McAndrew. And together um, we do the work of basically coordinating all the contributions that are coming in, helping keeping the community growing, getting the releases out the door, improving the stability of the product. Um, just a lot of stuff that keeps us quite, quite busy. Um, but at least as important, probably more important, are um, the wonderful folks that have 
jumped up, stepped up, <laughs> dove in, and helped um, really build City Serum over the last few years. And I, I want to really mention some of these superstars who have uh, really done so much uh, to help out on a volunteer basis. Um, Joanne Chester, who's uh, over in Australia, um, has sort of in the last year become our documentation uh, guru and has come in and really spent a lot of her uh, free time working on improving the user documentation. Um, for those of you who are non-technical but are interested in good documentation, um, that's something that we always need more help on. And if you're interested in helping with the next, next book or making the existing user guides better or even creating guides that are more specific to certain uh, verticals, um, come talk to me and we can get you hooked up. Um, we have a forum. Um, how many of you have actually used the, uh, the public community forums? Yeah, wow, okay. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that you had pretty good experiences on them. Um, a lot of what makes that forum work is that other people um, come in and help answer questions. And in fact, if you had a question answered yourself, it's great if you can pay it back and occasionally see if there's some questions that you yourself can answer. So I want to encourage that. Um, these are three folks, Herschel, Peter, and, and Xavier, who uh, sort of float to the top on the forum stats as folks who are monitoring uh, frequently and answering people's questions. And they do that because they think it's important to help the community. You know, they're not getting paid for that. Um, it's just, it's not part of their job, quote unquote. So um, help out if you can. Um, I mentioned the newsletter. I think that uh, our newsletter has become a thing of great beauty, in my opinion. How many people uh, have read the latest September newsletter? Great, okay. Well, how many people thought it was good? <laughs> <laughs> Trick question. <laughs> I thought it was pretty awesome. Um, and a special shout out to uh, Linda Pagano, who's here in the room somewhere. There she is. And Marissa Porter, who's also here. Um, Linda has been our newsletter editor for the last, what, 10 months maybe? Um, and has really done an amazing job uh, pulling together content and making it better and better every month. And Marissa came in uh, about three, four months ago and completely did an amazing overhaul on, on the newsletter design. And now it's something that I think, I, I feel like the whole community can be proud of. So um, really kudos to both of them. Um, the API is a really important part of what makes CiviSerum a flexible platform and uh, Eileen um, McNaughton over in New Zealand has been spearheading the API for quite a while. Um, again, it's sort of part of her job, but it's something that she does also at night when she's trying to put her kids to bed. <laughs> so um, really I uh, want to thank Eileen. Um, Chris Burgess, also in New Zealand, has done a lot of work on security and helping to make sure that we have a good structured process for security releases and security announcements. Um, Joe Murray up in Canada has been leading the charge on improving accounting integration for Civi CRM. Um, we have Nicholas in Denver with Civi Desk who's been really trying to help us step up on the marketing. We've really relied on grassroots um, word of mouth uh, for most of the history of the project and we're only just beginning to sort of wake up to Geez, you know, may maybe there is a role for marketing in this crazy open source project. Um, and folks like Nicholas are really helping us uh, step up a bit on that. Nicholas is also organizing uh, the next CiviCon North America, which will be in Denver. Um, for the first time, we're not gonna do it in San Francisco. Um, and we think that'll be fun to have a new place and maybe a little bit more central for folks to get to. Um, Matthew Luffy is uh, also Canadian who has been amazing uh, driving forward the internationalization efforts and making sure that Civi translates well into a bunch of languages and that folks can run Civi CRM and multi-language sites. Um, you know, it's particularly useful in Canada immediately since they, they want French and English on all their websites. Um, Frank and Michael who are here in the room in the back from Ginkgo um, have been going above board, above and beyond, uh, pushing the volunteer management aspects of Civi CRM, as well as helping with this conference and the sprint um, and support on the forums and a whole bunch of other stuff and uh, great contributors. Um, and Andrew Hunt and Jane um, Hanley have been doing a lot of work getting this conference together, um, as well as providing 
training resources for people, um, as well as just tons of other stuff. So these are all some of the great contributors. Please, a, a round of applause. <laughs> you know, so what really makes the VCRM successful is the people that come together and realize that in some way we're all in this together, and if we can all give a little bit back um, to help make this platform better for everybody, then that's part of the point. You know, we don't all have to reinvent the wheel, we can work together. Um, so we are just about to release uh, our next release, 4.5. Um, I'm, I'm going to mostly say it's going to be next Wednesday, could be a week later. <laughs> um, but um, it's been a really good release cycle, a little bit long for us, but we've had a lot of uh, great input. Um, <laughs> A lot of great input from users and a lot of great sponsorship from organizations to help make it better. Just want to highlight a few things. Um, part of the 4.5 release process has been, this is sort of a geeky thing, but continuous integration. And the idea is that every time somebody adds some code to CVCRM, it goes through an automatic testing process to try to make sure that it's not breaking something that's already there. Um, and that, con that work was done a lot by Tim Otten, who's on our core team back there. Raise your hand, Tim. Um, and was uh, sponsored um, quite a bit by Wikimedia Foundation, which has been a longtime user of CiviCRM. They're the Wikipedia folks, in case you didn't get that. Um, come on. Um, another important... Um, focus for this release cycle was increasing uh, our ability to be extended and customized easily. Um, and that's really been a theme over the last couple of years. Um, and in particular, moving away from the idea that the only way to customize an extensive easily was to make a Drupal module. Because um, now that we have a really increasingly balanced community um, between Drupal and WordPress and Joomla, we want to make sure that the innovations that happen in the CiviCRM community can be shared. Um, and so part of that is building a, an extensions framework, um, making sure that the API um, is stable and really robust and can do all the stuff that we need it to do. Um, creating a um, framework to help people build extensions, um, which is called Civics, and good documentation for that. Um, and um, also helping make sure that the localization um, is really robust, even for the extensions. Um, so there's a lot of pieces to that, and I think we've made a lot of progress in that. And I'm seeing more and more innovation happening with extensions. Um, last night, uh, AGH demonstrated a new extension for uh, address verification um, using Smarty Streets, which just like was super cool, and it's just like one example of the kind of things that people now are able to do um, and do on their own to scratch an itch, but then be able to share it really with the whole broad community. Um, we've also uh, spent a lot of energy on usability and responsiveness uh, for this release, and a lot of the sponsorship and trigger for that came from the New York State Senate, which is a heavy user of CiviCRM. Um, and there's, you'll notice if you start to play with 4 or 5 that just there's a lot of more stuff that happens in the browser without the whole page having to reload and a lot of stuff where you can just click and edit things right in line. So just trying to make it faster um, and more comfortable to use Civi and, and hopefully more intuitive. So hopefully people will like that. Um, there's also some cool new stuff. Um, how many people here use the Civi case extension? Anybody? Okay, cool, enough. So um, that's an extension that's one of the, one of the relatively newer parts of CiviCRM for case management, um, and it, it had a very clunky uh, process for configuring it, um, and you had to write XML files and stuff. Um, National Democratic Institute um, worked with the core team and sponsored uh, a whole new configuration UI um, that's quite cool, and now you don't need to go out and know any XML, you just go to some screens and say what you want your activities to be in your timelines, and uh, I think it's really slick. Um, partial payments uh, for event registrations and the ability to edit event registrations after they've been submitted um, was a pretty big need, and the Great Lakes Planetarium Association stepped up and sponsored that um, improvement that's going to be part of 4.5, kind of a big deal. Um, 
Soft credits have been, the functionality for soft credits has been growing over the course of the last year and uh, AGH strategies contributed uh, funding um, in order to take that to the next step and make sure that soft credits were um, easily searchable and included nicely in a whole wide variety of reports. Um, somebody, let's see, Andrew talked about scheduled reminders earlier today and a new feature was being able to have SMS messaging being part of what scheduled reminders can spit out. Um, so you can spit out text messages on a scheduled basis triggered by various things that happen. Um, text people to remind them that their event starts tomorrow, et cetera. Um, so that's, that's a pretty cool new feature too. And finally, uh, a lot of work went into the user guide for 4.5 to make sure that it was up to date, cleaning up a lot of stuff that was confusing. Um, so I think that's going to be a lot better too. Going forward, um, our top three goals uh, are we want to make sure that each release is as solid as possible. We've had a, quite a long beta cycle for this release and are improving our test coverage every day. So we hope that we're making progress in that way. Um, we are looking at integration of more new technologies into the platform, um, including browse, inside browser technologies like Angular and uh, new database technologies uh, doctrine being one that we're using. Um, and we want to continue the ability for people to innovate and customize and make SurveyCRM do exactly what they want and look like they want uh, with a minimum of requiring code. Um, so that's, we're heading more in that direction as much as possible. Um, we're going to have a pretty short release cycle for this next release because um, we have a lot of exciting stuff we want to get in. Um, we were uh, lucky enough to be uh, approved by Google for their Summer of Code for five different Summer of Code projects this last summer, which uh, was a really nice recognition of the uh, importance of the project in the overall ecosystem. And at least two of those projects are going to turn into improvements in core um, for CiviMail. Um, one is a big usability leap in terms of how easy it is to move around in the CiviMail interface. Um, and the other is um, the adding of A to B testing so that you can send out different versions of your um, mailing campaign and get quick feedback as to what's working better than what um, and continue with that. And that's, that's kind of a killer feature that MailChimp has had obviously for a long time and um, we think it's important that it be part of the built-in mailing capability. Um, oh, and just to mention the Progressive Technology Project, Center for Constitutional Rights and the New York State Senate are helping to fund the remaining work um, for the mail projects. Um, recurring events is a second piece that's uh, currently in development for 4.6 um, and kind of a missing, missing feature in CiviCRM for those of you who do that kind of thing. Um, that's being sponsored by Zing. Um, and adding the ability to record sales taxes um, or VAT um, as well as spit out invoices um, built into core also part of 4.6. So some cool stuff coming. Um, in terms of the project, I'll try to wrap this up. Um, we, as I mentioned, we want to try to get a little bit better about marketing. We now have a marketing committee and we have some funds set aside um, for people to use to represent Civi and speak and have booths at various conferences. These are some of the ones that um, we've either targeted or are targeting. Um, if any of you are interested in representing or evangelizing Civi at a conference where you think it's relevant and people want to know about Civi, Definitely come to me and I'll hook you up. Um, we can figure out a way to help make that possible, um, get your resources, et cetera. Um, we are always wanting to get the community more involved. Um, so we got a great community, but it can be even stronger. You know, of the eight to 11,000 organizations that use Civi, there's only a very small number actually engaged in the project or giving back. So we want to increase that just a little more. <laughs> Um, and um, the project has also been working on sustainability and I think there's been a number of blog posts and maybe you've heard about that and I'm just going to close with a couple of minutes on that topic. Um, I know that um, people have wondered from time to time what it actually costs to do CIVI <laughs> um, and so this is kind of a snapshot of our current project expenses. Um, so we spend about 500k on salaries, 25 on marketing. 
50 on travel, sprints and stuff, and 25 mostly on infrastructure uh, for a total of $600,000. So as things go, we're really a pretty small organization and, and uh, I'm probably pounding my chest a little bit, but I think that we've done a whole lot and had quite a bit of impact based on the size of the, uh, of the organization and how much, how much we actually spend. Um, in terms of revenue, um, current revenue targets, um, we expect to continue to get about 100K from foundations. Um, we do consulting as a core team, which is basically those projects that where we build stuff that gets added to the core, but it gets paid for by an organization like the Great Lakes Planetarium Association or Zing or uh, National Democratic Institute. <coughs> so that's um, another about a third of our revenue. The partner program um, is targeted to provide another quarter of the revenue or so. And we are launching a new membership program, which is targeted at end user organizations and sort of using the national public radio model, um, where we want to try to encourage end user organizations to think about their investment in CIVI CRM. Um, so this is the new membership program. Um, it was just launched this last week. It was announced in the newsletter. Um, and it's not really about paying to use Civi Serum. Obviously, Civi Serum is free to use, free to download, um, but it's about protecting your investment in it. Um, so it's geared toward end user organizations, trying to give end users organizations a way to support the project. Um, it's also going to include partner based benefits. So you'll be seeing a list of discounts and services that partners will provide to, to um, members. Um, to help sweeten the pot a little bit, you know, kind of like with NPR, you get your radio and your, um, yeah. Um, hopefully it will help sustain the project um, and give us some more stable funding streams based on our growing user base. Um, and the membership program should impact everyone that uses Civi Serum because it helps just keep the project going. Um, we've just launched and we already have um, six folks that have signed up, so that's a good start for the first week. Um, and so these are some of the ones uh, that are supporting Civi Serum, and by supporting Civi Serum as a member, they're supporting all of you out there that use it. Um, more details at civiserum.org or um, talk to me. Um, some of you um, might expect to get um, an email or a some other kind of communication from Josh Gowan, who is our new membership coordinator slash fundraiser, and hopefully uh, at least listen to what he has to say, and, and I would much appreciate it. So um, that's it for my talk. Um, I just want to reiterate thanking the amazing sponsors that made this event possible. Um, without them, we couldn't do it. Um, so thank you very much. And um, a really special thanks to uh, Jane and Linda, who did a lot of work pulling this conference together. And I think both of them, is Jane here? Where's Jane? Yay, and Linda again. Big round of applause. Thanks, everybody.